Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, worshiping on this fourth Sunday of Easter in our sanctuary. Uh, via cyberspace, but at least we're here and it feels good and right. We are welcomed into the family of God on this fourth Sunday of Easter. Let us worship God together in faith, hope, and love. Please join me in prayer. We lift our eyes, thoughts, and hearts to you, O God. Your pastoral care for all of us brings us together. We offer our praise and our thanks to you for shepherding our church family, and indeed, the whole United Church of Christ. We pray for blessing, instructions, and peace through our welcoming shepherd, Jesus. Amen. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare before me a table in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Our second scripture reading this morning is from the book of John, chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not know how to care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. 
just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. I receive this command from my Father. This Sunday, in addition to being the fourth Sunday of Easter, is also the Good Shepherd Sunday. And it's during this week every year in which we read something from the chapter of John or something in reference to shepherds and Jesus being the Good Shepherd. Unfortunately, I often find these hard to relate to. I don't know anything about sheep. I don't know anything about shepherding. I have seen sheep in a petting farm. That's about as close to understanding sheep as I've gotten. But even reading every year, something will occasionally jump out that I've never really noticed or thought about before. And this year, the line that jumped out for me was, when Jesus says, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them along also, and they will listen to my voice. Over the past several weeks, I've heard reports that, uh, for the first time in the history of the United States anyway, over 50% of the population doesn't associate with a particular religion. They're often titled the nuns, the, the ones that check none with religious affiliation on, on surveys. And as a minister, that's a little disturbing to me. I certainly want to spread the word of God and want people to, to understand who God is and that God loves them. But this passage also reassures me a little bit that God is still active. Now, now, I've come to know God through Jesus. Other people have come to know God in other ways. But if we take this as God saying, I have others, and they know my hand, and there will be one flock, one shepherd, it reassures me that God is still active in our lives and still interpreting scripture for us. And at some point, the, the dream that we have is that there will be one universal church or synagogue or temple or something, the, the, the kingdom of God coming here on earth. And we will all understand that God is real and that God loves us. Now, we've got some work to do if we take this seriously. We learn about what the kingdom of God might look like through our Gospels, but we're not there yet. We pray every week for the gospel of God, to, the kingdom of God to come, but we're not there yet. But this gives me some hope that, that what we're doing isn't wrong. What we're doing is spreading the word as to how we've come to know God. And obviously for 2,000 years, people have come to know God through Jesus. But maybe those other paths, Muslims, Jewish, um, the, the other paths that lead to God, maybe they're as legitimate. And God is going to reveal God's self in some way that we don't expect. Often when we read our gospel, Jesus does something totally out of the, the, what we expect him to do. Uh, and sometimes it's, it's shocking for us. We, we, you know, the parable's going along and you expect to tend this way and Jesus turns it around. And maybe that's what's going to happen. Maybe God is working God's thoughts, his, God's imagination through the world, and at some point we'll go, well, we didn't see that coming. 
But being open to whatever that is, I think is important. So for this week, I'd like you to think about how God is active in your life and how God desiring one flock that all understand and recognize God's voice might be working through both you and the church in order to bring the kingdom of heaven here to earth. And we pray someday that there will be one flock, that these divisions will, will cease and that we'll all understand who God is and, and what God is about. And until then, we continue to recognize the way that we have experienced God. And we continue to preach the word that we have received through Jesus. And hopefully that will, will bring more people into that flock. God be with you this week. Amen. Join me in the spirit of prayer. Good Shepherd, you call us to follow where you lead. Give us ears to hear and know your voice. And give us the courage and strength to lay down our lives for one another, even as you laid down your life for us. Good Shepherd, receive our prayer. Good Shepherd, gather to yourself the people of the world, so that there will be one flock under your reign. Forgive us for our hatred and divisions. Good Shepherd, 
receive our prayer. Good Shepherd, you have blessed us with green pastures and still waters, places in which in your world where we find rest and renewal. We thank you for the beauty of this earth. Good Shepherd, receive our prayer. Good Shepherd, even when wolves attack, you never leave your loved ones. Even in the valley of the shadow of death, you are present. Be with all victims of violence, comfort them in their distress. Good Shepherd, receive our prayer. Good Shepherd, you could love us so much that you call us each by name. We pray for the healing of our brothers and sisters in your name. Good Shepherd, receive our prayer. Good Shepherd, you are our salvation. Grant all who have died a dwelling place in your house forever. Good Shepherd, receive our prayer as we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray when you were on earth, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Embraced and enfolded into the family of God, in gratitude we have responded graciously with our time, our talent, and finances to the church's resources. May what we offer be shared with the whole family of God. Many of you have been sending in your offerings, and we thank you for that, or dropping them off at the vestry, and we thank you for that. It enables us to continue the work of the church, even though we can't meet in person at this time. So let's take a moment and dedicate all these gifts that have been received. Blessed and blessing God, we bring, the, bring you our gifts from our hearts and our lives. May our gifts be used to bring forth light and life to those whom you call into this family. Amen. Christ is made the sure foundation, Christ the head and cornerstone. And other God and precious, binding all the church in one. Holy Zion's help forever, and our confidence alone. To this temple where we call you, come, O God of hosts, to with your constant loving kindness, hear your people as they pray. Give your fullest benediction, grace to follow Christ the way. Here renew your servant's vision, that by faith they may attain. Peace and hope, renewed compassion, strength to comfort those in pain. Tears and grief transformed to gladness in your everlasting reign. As we prepare to leave this virtual worship space, hear these words. Go now 
with your trust in the Good Shepherd. And let us love, not just in words, but in truth and action. Believe in the name of Jesus Christ and love one another, just as he has commanded us. And may God be at your side, even in the valleys of death. May Christ Jesus be the cornerstone of your life. And may the Holy Spirit abide in you and tend you with love and mercy all the days of your life. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. <laughs>